everyone, welcome to another ASC Labs video review. I'm Aaron Schatz, Editor-in-Chief. Today we'll be looking at the AirLink 101 Sky IP Cam 777W. The W means wireless. This product was provided by Geeks.com and we thank you for their support. This is review ID 9955 and you can check out this review and all our other reviews by going to www.ASCLabs.com. It's called the Sky IP Cam for a reason. It's an IP camera. The resolution is 640 by 480 which is a VGA. Which isn't bad for a security camera, but I'm, you know, there are other cameras that are higher resolution and they're much more expensive. This one retails for about 160, which is a great price for all the features that you get. So let's actually go into a little bit of the features of the camera. Now, as you can see from the antenna, it's wireless. It's wireless B and wireless G. And on the back, you have the USB dismount button. There is a USB port for capturing images. We'll go into that later. There's an Ethernet port for wiring it, because most security people will tell you not to use wireless. I don't suggest using wireless either, but if you need to, you have it. There's GPIO ports for general purpose input-output. If you wanted to do like alarm triggering or something or other functionality, you can do that with this. There's um, some vents here, because the unit does get quite hot actually. The DC input and the reset and the speaker out, which is an interesting feature which we'll go a little more into later but that's pretty much all the ports of the unit and you have the front which the camera moves around that's the pan this is the tilt the range of motion is very good when you first power on the camera you'll see the camera actually auto test so let's go ahead and plug in the power and you can see the status light on right here and in a second you'll see the camera start moving for its auto test. It'll basically move to one side and tilt a little bit and then move back to whatever its center position was. Once the unit actually starts communicating wirelessly or wired, the green light will start blinking. So we'll wait a little bit while that happens. Let me tell you something though. This camera has a lot of features that I didn't expect. Oh, there it goes. And that was the auto test. But that gives you a little demonstration of how the pan and tilt actually work. The software is interesting and most people will probably just use the embedded web browser built into it or they have a utility for Windows only that works pretty well as well. Now, the unit actually has a lot of features and we'll go into most of them in here, but the video is not the entire story. You have to check out the written portion which goes into every detail that this has. So please do check out the written portion. Now I mentioned that the camera has a speaker port, but it also has a microphone built into it. The microphone and the speaker are really useless for this kind of camera. It's a security camera. You really don't need to hear things. You really need to capture images. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention was the series of IR LEDs which will illuminate objects at night. So let's say you have this in a doorway and it's at night. You don't really want the camera to shine a big bright light on a subject. You just wanted to illuminate the subject so you can see their face and identify them if needed. You can also shut off the indicator LEDs to, you know, make sure the camera is very incognito. Sometimes you don't want to let the person know that you're actually looking at them. Because let's, let's say you're actually mounted this in your home and you want it to be a little inconspicuous. Let's say somebody robs your home and they look at the camera and they see the lights are blinking and everything and then they go, oh, I should take that too because, you know, now I've been identified. So. That's a nice feature that they included that a lot of security people will probably like. The camera actually handles all the functions on its own. You can actually opt to have the video saved to a NAS, you can send them by email, you can upload them to an FTP. If you plug in a USB thumb drive, you can actually save images. Now all this stuff is either done by uh, scheduling or motion sensing. And the motion sensing of the camera is probably the best feature. And unfortunately that requires Windows either an ActiveX control on the website built into here or on the software that you can get Windows only. Everything else about the camera works in every single operating system because it's all standard web stuff. So other than motion sensing, which you need Windows to set up, everything else can be done by Linux, Mac, whatever, on Firefox or whatever you want. Um, unfortunately, the motion sensing is the best part of the camera. So you really need to have a Windows PC to set it up. So after you set up what you want to capture onto like a NAS or an FTP, you basically set up these motion sensoring. There's you get two boxes that you can program to have some uh, triggering mechanism. So let's say you have a 
you know, a box here and a box here, you set up a threshold. If, if the threshold changes, it'll start recording. So everything is done by events. So if you want to say, I want to, when this box goes, I'm triggering, when these boxes go, because it's all one event. When these boxes go, I want to save it to the NAS, like 10 seconds of footage at least, until the movement stops. And we have video of that, so you can check that out as well. It's attached. It's not attached to this video. So you can check that out after. Interestingly enough, though, the motion capture, you want to put the threshold down because sometimes the threshold doesn't get, you know, picked up enough before the person actually leaves the field of view. So you want to put the threshold at the absolute lowest it possibly can without triggering it all the time. The USB support is only really there for capturing still images, which is still very handy. Let's say you have this in a doorway and you capture it by motion. You can actually have still images on the USB thumb drive without having any sort of other hardware support for saving videos or anything. So while I can't save videos to the thumb drive, it will save stills. And I have an example of a still shot on the written portion, so please check that out. One of the features that the camera has is a dual codec. So it can capture in MJPEG or MPEG-4. Now most users won't care what it is, it's only VGA graphics anyway. So, but most security things will use MJPEG. JPEGs are good because it's a series of still images, so you can actually grab a frame very easily. MPEG-4 requires a little more processing power, and really I found the quality a little worse over MPEG-4 streaming. MPEG-4 streaming only works on Windows, basically. MJPEG will work on anything, so. If you have security software like ZoneMinder, it'll work on there. But ZoneMinder, actually, interestingly enough, will work with this camera totally, even the pan and tilt. So it does work with home DVR solutions. The one real drawback of the camera is the fact that it can't autofocus, and that's, that's really a major drawback to the camera. Most of the capturing you'll do is probably at a fixed distance anyway. To actually focus the camera, you have to turn the focusing ring here. Now, if the subjects you want to capture are like about more than five feet apart, you won't be able to actually see them. They'll be out of focus. That's really the only major drawback of the camera, but since it's a very cheap camera, I'm not going to fault it that much. You can get more expensive cameras that have autofocusing and actual zoom, but they're probably double or triple or quadruple the price, and they won't have any of the features that this has. So let me show you how the IR LEDs actually work. There is a light sensor right here, and if I cover it, you should see the IR LEDs turn on. And once they're on, they'll illuminate the target at night, and they won't be able to know it, but the camera will be able to pick it up. The camera costs $160 from Geeks.com, and for this price, it is a great buy. For all the features you get, including the pretty much the all-in-one aspect of this, you won't find this on any expensive IP cameras. They usually just send pictures and that's it. The one feature that's missing is the autofocus, but that's not a deal breaker. If you need an IP camera that's an entry level solution, this is it. And I suggest if you need it, you buy it right now. $160 is a steal. For AAC Labs, I'm Aaron Schatz, and thank you for watching. Please be sure to check out the textual portion of this review by going to www.aclabs.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all our video reviews. Thank you again for watching.